Emilia Marchenko. I'm Dennis Kudla. I'm Jesper de Jong. I'm Henry Laksan. I am Francisco Segundolo. And you're listening to the Game to Love podcast. All right, welcome back, <laughs> tennis fans. Here we are with something extra special brought for our viewers. This is something new in the tennis world. There's not much tennis going on at the moment. And what better time to introduce uh, something groundbreaking, I would say. And we've got Jonathan Ludwig in with us from Fantium. How are you, Jonathan, today? Are you well? Yes, I'm, I'm very well. And I'm also very excited uh, to, to speak to you today and you know tell your, your audiences uh, more about what we are building uh, with Fantium in the tennis space. Yeah, so let's start with that. Explain to us what is Fantium uh, for those who have never seen anything to do with it before. Yes, so um, basically what, what Fantium is, is um, or what we are building with Fantium, it's an athlete investment platform uh, in tennis where um, sports enthusiasts um, can invest in athletes um, they believe in and participate in their financial success Yeah, and, um, and also connect with them in a completely new way. Um, and that's that's exciting um, because as you as you probably know, right? As as tennis experts, um, tennis is a very expensive. Uh, <laughs> it's a very expensive uh, sport, yeah, to to be to be done, especially early on in a in a in a career of a young young athlete uh, tennis player. Um, and it takes a lot of money, yeah, to become basically the Djokovic of today. Um, and there are not many like. Um, uh, possibilities for young athletes to finance their career, right? So this means that a lot of young athletes actually who have the talent, yeah, to you know actually make it to the top, they can't uh, have the shot because they are lacking the the financial resources. And that's something we want to change. And we believe basically by building Fantium and connecting these young athletes with sports enthusiasts around the world who can invest and support these kind of um, athletes, yeah, we can revolutionize the, the sports and also make it more equal basically for for young athletes yeah who have the talent who are willing to put the amount of work into their career um and then give them the chance to to make it to the top i think it's like really interesting and i think that you're doing something which is just great for tennis that's that's the yeah. key thing here and uh, was there like an like particular instance that you came across when you were sort of the, the idea flourished? Did you see like some player who you thought, well, that player would have made it uh, had they had the backing? Was there one instance where that came up? A lot of times. Yeah, a lot of times. And I'm like, my background is I'm a, I'm a sports enthusiast, right? So I'm, um, I'm, I'm kind of, I've never played, like tennis is my go-to to, to sport, obviously, but um, I've never played professionally. But I have some friends who are involved in the tour, who, you know, work also with, with athletes together. And all the time you hear basically of like these young athletes and young players basically struggling because they can't finance, you know, the traveling, they can't finance their, their, their coach, et cetera, et cetera. So um, that's on the one hand, um, you see these young athletes then who kind of have to stop, yeah, playing to do what they love and where they have the talent for. But then on the other hand, you also see and you hear a lot of stories of, of actually these athletes who have to accept like really bad terms of financing from people basically, you know, involved in the industry. Right. And that's something, you know, it just which is heartbreaking when, when you hear like players, you know, on the tour who play on the tour now very successfully and they have to kind of give up like a lot of money. Right. In terms of the prize money they're winning or in terms of the endorsement deeds they're they are, they are earning um, to basically people yeah, who kind of um, were the only ones, you know, available uh, back back in the early, early, early stage of the career. Um, and that's something we think shouldn't be the case, yeah. Because in tennis, as as you know, there are one billion of tennis enthusiasts all all around the world. It's the most popular individual sport worldwide. And um, you know, you as a player, um, first of all, you should basically have the chance to make it to the top. But you also should basically should be able to, you know, fundraise and get the money on 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 fair terms. And um, yeah, that's why we are we are building Fantio. 
Yeah, it's very interesting because the first time I saw Fantium, I must admit, I was a little bit sceptical myself because I didn't really understand what you guys do. But the more and more information I get from you and just reading online and looking at your website, which is great, by the way, I really recommend heading over to their website. It really does explain everything very easily for people who aren't necessarily the smartest when it comes to sort of NFTs and the whole web web point, web point 3.0 universe. So I recommend that. It is just so needed in tennis, like Ben was saying, because tennis has always been sort of branded as a bit of a rich man's game. It's very difficult to sustain booking of courts, coaches, physios. And to be a top athlete nowadays, it isn't like the past where you could go to the pub before you play and have a few beers. Now there's so much more sports science scientists involved in every single little detail and in order to be the best, you need that funding and support. And I think it's brilliant that this provides an opportunity for players from, from backgrounds or from ages who necessarily don't have that financial backing to be able to give it and to get it from the fans, the people who care about them more than people who are looking just for money. At the end of the day, the fans are the people who really want to back that player, support them. They willing them over the line. They want them to win titles. So I think it's great that you're bringing the fans together with the players and it's supporting the players and it gives the fans a lot of accessibility to the players as well. No, hundred hundred percent. You're you're completely right, and I'm I'm glad that you you know um you mentioned the support angle, right? So because it's not on, only about the financial return, right? So yeah. we believe, and that's what we already see now. The the users on the platform they're very interested in in basically beyond the return they might be potentially getting out of their investment. So it's really about basically you know investing obviously in the player, so getting a potential return, but then also supporting the player and know that you know that. With the money you gave him, and the, the the player has suddenly you know the chance to to make something something out of it, um, and um, and that's going to be exciting because um, I believe tennis, yeah, as many other sports, they serve a very important role um, also for society um, overall, right? So sports connect, yeah, sports unite, yeah. So you you play with everybody, yeah, it doesn't know any any difference, and just by supporting athletes to kind of yeah. And any of the best athletes to to kind of inspire other people again. Um, I think also the world as a as a as a whole will will, will be a better place. Do you, do you think that the, that this would be like a really good opportunity as well? Because we've spoken to many tennis players who have obviously been in the challengers, who have been like in ITFs, this type of tennis, and the money is so focused at the top. Do you think that this is going to now? really give support to that that new breed of tennis player like obviously you, there could be like injuries things like that when you're young in your career and sometimes it wipes out players entire career before it's even begun if they don't have the support do you think that this is a way that it could help people get past that yeah no no 100 percent um so what we what we target the Phantom are basically two types of, of, of tennis players. Um, we call them already established professionals. Um, the ones you just mentioned who are, let's say, playing maybe on the challenger level or who, you know, just also kind of play, started playing on the more like uh, bigger ATP tournaments, but who are still early in their career. You know, they're earning, earning enough prize money to kind of, you know, cover the costs, but still they could basically, if they would get some upfront money, um, they could kind of invest it in, 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 in and do like spe special investments they wouldn't have done otherwise, like hiring their own fitness coach or you know hiring hiring their own tennis coach. Yeah, so um, so that's the, the first uh, part of the the players we're targeting, um, and they can what they can do with Phantom, they can actually say for one specific season only. Yeah, it's usually obviously the next season they're gonna um, make a small share of their. Uh, seasonal price money available to fans. Yeah, so in this case, they can we call it they can launch a season token, and with the season token, basically, you know, they give away um, a small share of price money. It can be five percent of the price money, can be ten percent, and then the proceeds they're getting out of that um, basically sale um, before the season starts, they can reinvest earlier in into their career. And maybe without Phantom, they would have done this investment only like in a couple of years. So they kind of can kind of like kind of um, accelerate um, their, their, their career with it. 
And the second part of athletes is uh, the athletes we just talked about, right? The young athletes who are not earning any relevant prize money yet, um, who need money yeah, desperately in order to kind of continue their career and, and make it to the top. And these young athletes can use the platform in order to fundraise um, uh, money um, they need um, by basically then offering a share in their prize money, but it can be also a share in their actually commercial deals or so endorsement deals, basically throughout the career for a specific um, a certain um, amount of time. Um, so Fantium is, is, we see Fantium basically both as, you know, relevant for professional players as well as young athletes um, very early on in their career. Yeah, I've got a question about the athletes it, that themselves. So how much of a challenge have you found it to convince athletes to sign up with Fantium? And what is your sort of unique selling point? How have you been selling it to the athletes themselves? Yeah, so um, we started um, when we, when we you know, started working on Fantium, we started actually with the professional athletes um, initially, yeah. Yeah, because we believe you know, it's, um, they also serve an um, important role for the platform to you know, build up also the community of, of tennis enthusiasts yeah, and kind of make them aware of the platform. Um, so when we approached them, obviously, you know, it was kind of unique for them, right? So why should I give you know, away um, a certain amount of, of prize money for, for, for next season. Um, so initially, we like, we reached out to everybody. What we very quickly realized, obviously, you know, if you're at the top five or top 10 and, and, and money really doesn't make any difference anymore, yeah, if you, whether how much you're getting or also when you're getting, uh, getting it, then Fantium is not the right place yet um, to kind of, you know, be, be active, yeah. But there is a there is a um, certain bucket of of players, yeah, who are let's say earning between five hundred thousand and maybe two million of prize money, still early in their career, yeah, who are very interested in Fantium um, to basically use the platform, yeah, to kind of you know fundraise the money and do these special investments, and so that's the first part, yeah. So the first challenge was obviously you know just talking about giving away some prize money even though they don't need it necessarily. Um, the second one, um, the second challenge, obviously, is then, you know, also kind of educating them about blockchain technology and, and NFTs in particular, um, um, because that's, you know, work, uh, what we use as the underlying technology to enable basically these athlete investments um, and enable athletes to tokenize their, their, their future price money or future income. Um, and that's something I, I must say was easier than expected. Yeah, okay. even though the, the the market is obviously you know not the not the not the best timing, but still a lot of um, sports athletes are actually kind of interested also in these new type of technologies. Yeah, so we were actually quite surprised. Yeah, how 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 easy comparatively um, it was to kind of you know educate them and and you know tell them more about how we how we want to do it and you know what are the benefits also using blockchain technology because. The main benefit of blockchain technology is that they don't need any middleman, so to say, right? They just can use our platform. So we provide a technical infrastructure for them in order to tokenize um, their future income and make it available basically to sports enthusiasts. Yeah, and that's that's groundbreaking. Um, so it was comparatively easier than, than we expected it to be. And that's also our vision because obviously like we believe in the technology and we believe, you know, it will revolutionize many different areas, including sports, including tennis. Um, and that, you know, now obviously tennis is, is our first sport. So it's kind of an exciting also mission for us to kind of, you know, educate the market and educate the, the, the tennis industry about blockchain technology. Yeah. And oh, I mean, you've done a very yeah. good job with it as well, because the first player, I know it's official because I've seen it on the website, is no other than Grand Slam champion Dominic Team, which is, I mean, that's a big one. You've done very well with that for sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we feel, you know, we feel humbled um, to be able to, to, to work together with Dominic. Um, and it's, I mean, he's such an exciting, exciting player who has, you know, um, who has, you know, done so much also for the sport who has, you know, won the US Open as one of the few players beyond, you know, the regular ones. Um, and he's just also such a humble, humble person, right? And when he um, heard about Fantium and what we are, you know, trying to build with Fantium and kind of how we want to change the, the tennis world and, and also other sports 
uh, worlds in the in the future. Yeah, he was immediately basically hooked. Yeah, and he wanted to support the project. And obviously, his his case um, is a bit special. Yeah, compared to our regular um, target um, athlete, but he was so basically um, passionate also about the about the topic that uh, you know he's he's now the first uh, player on the platform, which is very exciting, obviously for for everybody who who love tennis. Yeah, because now you can actually uh, buy um, you know a, a share of his of his prize money, but then also you get like very cool fan perks basically on top of it. And you can connect him with, um, you know, uh, in, a, in a completely new way, like it was never, never possible. Before. Yeah. I mean, what a great ambassador for, for the, uh, for the new company, really. I think that you couldn't really ask for, for much more. He's a very like fan friendly person, a uh, great marketable person to have the first, the first person on there. I want to go back to the sort of the NFT thing. Obviously, there's going to be people like me out there. This is like the old fuddy duddies. We don't really understand it yet, but we've got to move with the times and I've got to try and learn it. And I feel that like this is the type of thing that will make me learn it more so than if it was just like buying cartoon characters online or something. Oh, I don't understand. Yeah, things like that. What I, can you explain to me just as in some uh, more simple terms, probably for me? <laughs> uh, but how would it work? Like if you have shares in, let's say, Dominic team and he was doing really well with his prize uh, prize money. Uh, can you then take some and move it to another athlete as well? Do you does your do your tokens increase? Is this how it works? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad you're, you're asking this because obviously also in tennis, most of the people who are passionate about tennis are not into NFTs or Web3 or crypto yet. So also basically when you when you enter, when you visit our website, you will actually don't read much about NFTs and tokens, right? So we really try to also kind of present it in a very web two friendly way. So everybody is understand can understand it, but is also able to use the platform. Um so how it works is that we just using the technology basically behind NFTs and behind basically blockchain, uh, so to say, in order to a enable these these athlete investments. So what you can do, you go on the on the website, you can sign up on the website just by using your email address. You can also use your Facebook social login or your Google uh, social login and then create an account. And with the account basically creating created, there is a wallet basically in the in the background being created, which serves serves as a kind of your bank account, yeah, for Fantium. Um, you can also bring your own bank account. It's called um, a MetaMask wallet, right? So if you already have one, but just, um, yeah, uh, you will have basically this, this this wallet in the background. And then you can buy um, a token of him. So buy an NFT or a share in Web2 uh, um, terminology. And then um, uh, you can use your credit card in order to do it. So you don't need any crypto knowledge. Uh, you can just use your credit card. And then you own this share, of, of let's say Dominic team and with the share you own a small percentage um, of his prize money he will earn next season 2023 um, along basically with the financial utilities so the share of prize money you own uh, you also basically have access to certain fan perks um, depending on the type of share you you decided to buy um, and then what happens is basically when the season starts every quarter um, the share of prize money you are entitled to will be paid out into your account, actually directly by by Domi. Um, uh, so it, you you will receive your your um, relative share into your wallet, into your bank account um, on the platform, and there you can basically decide whether you know you want to reinvest it uh, into a different athlete, maybe maybe into a young athlete, yeah, to support his career. Or you can also obviously always basically, you know, um, like kind of transfer it um, uh, onto your bank account. Yeah, so it's very easy. Um, it's basically, you know, everything happens on, on the platform. Um, it's safe. So also we as a platform, we're not touching the money uh, at any point of time. So basically it's your money. It's in your wallet. Um, and you can basically at any point of time, you can decide what you want to do with it. Uh, is there a limit of how many tokens you can buy for a player or do you have it capped? Yeah, we have it capped, but it, it always depends on the on the athlete. 
Um, so, um, and there is always for an athlete, um, let's say of Dominic team, there was always um, a little bit before everybody can basically, you know, buy the token. There is a pre-sale, we call it pre-sale. So you can already apply on the platform also for the pre-sale of the next athlete. Um, and with the pre-sale, you're only allowed entitled to buy one um, token, so one share. Um, later on, it's also kept uh, basically at a certain limit. So make sure that, you know, not like all of the 10% goes to one uh, individual, um, but it's basically decided always by the by the athlete himself how many um, shares he basically wants to have it as a maximum for, for one person. Um, what we offer or what every athlete basically decides to do is basically we have three different categories of share classes. Um, so we have um, basically the um, the bronze category, yeah, which usually usually costs around hundred dollars. Then then we have the silver category, which is usually around five hundred dollars. And then we have the highest uh, share class, which is the gold category, which is um, something between thousand and ten thousand um, dollars. And obviously, the difference in these categories is that um, each category um, basically is connected to a different amount of prize money ownership you are entitled to then for the next season. No, it's very interesting. I'm just going to be learning. And like the more I hear about it, I feel like the more questions are going to keep on coming out. And I'm sure the more players and there's going to be more sports as well. Is that right? They're in the works as well. Uh, do you have any particular sports? Are they going to, are you going to be sticking with just individual uh, player sports or teams? Is there going to be that involved as well? Yeah, so we're going to stick to individual sports for now. Um, and we are launching uh, in, in tennis hour. We just have launched tennis, so to say. Yeah. So for the next month, obviously, our, our, our fo uh, sole focus is, is on tennis. But in, basically, in the background, we are already preparing different other sports. And, and um, also, what we, what we are doing is basically we are including the community of Fantium in the process yeah so that you know you as a community or part of our community you as you have also basically something to say and you can basically recommend a sport or kind of participate in the voting yeah which sport should should be next but obviously there are like a lot of individual sports which kind of share the same challenges um obviously the next one you know who comes to mind is is, is golf yeah so it's very close to yeah. to tennis but then there are also other exciting like more digital sports yeah, in the esports world, uh, which we are also very, like taking a very close look at the moment. Um, so we haven't decided um, when and which sports will be launched next, um, but definitely next year there will be another sport also available on the platform. Yeah, I, th I think you've made it clear that you don't really have to be an NFT expert or a Web 3.0 expert to be able to do this. You just need to have a bank card and to be able to have access to the internet and log in, receive your wallet. You can then pick how many tokens you want, whether it's going to be what different tiers. And it seems pretty simple to do. But for those listening at home who are interested and who would like to participate in this, when is the official launch? Because I don't believe they can do it right now. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, we're still preparing now the first launch of the first um, athlete drop, which will be basically the season tokens of, of, of Dominic team. And it will happen in December. So that's something I can already dis disclose. And um, the, the exact date will be basically announced in the, in the next few days. So I'm happy to basically like we can put it in the show notes if also if you if you if you want. Um, so it will happen uh, in December, um, okay. uh, awesome. um, basically, yeah, so the next in next uh, uh, two weeks for sure. Exciting, isn't it? Yeah. I'm trying to think, like, are there any uh, negatives to Fantium? I mean, we're, I've been trying to, th obviously, you try and think about this. When your money is invested in something, you're always looking to how you can make more money. Are there any times when you can lose money on players? Yeah, yeah. So obviously, you know, it's an investment. Yeah. So you, obviously, you have to support angle. So, but it's still also investment, right? So that's the unique thing about it. And investment, you know, can can have positive returns, but you can also have negative returns, right? And basically, we are very transparent on the platform, also on the price, like how these shares, let's say, of athletes are being priced, so that you know, okay, what to expect in what kind of scenario. Right, uh, basically, when the season starts for professional athletes, also offer for the for the career of a young athlete, right? So it's very transparent. So you 
always have to look basically on the numbers. Basically, if you believe that professional player, let's say, you know, will um, improve next season, so we'll have basically a better season or earn more, you know, more tournament prize money, which, by the way, um, next season for the ATP, since they, they increased the, the prize money pool by 20 to 30 percent, is actually, from an investment perspective, quite a, a very unique uh, year to participate. Um, but you also have to take into account, like when you invest in a young athlete, that the risk is obviously much higher compared to when you invest in a professional athlete. And I always compare it basically, you know, investing in a young athlete, a little bit like startup investment. So I'm, you know, I'm a tech entrepreneur and business angel uh, my, myself for the last 10 years. So I've invested in a, a lot of different uh, startups. And there it's also basically very similar because also very few of these um, startups I'm invested in, they were actually going to make it. Right. And, but I still do it. Yeah. Because of two reasons. First of all, basically the ones who will make it actually, they will make up for everybody, like for all the other startups who didn't make it. So that's number one. And number two is basically that I want to support teams who are working, working on exciting ideas and projects. And that's very similar to, you know, investing and, and supporting a young athlete. Yeah. Because you can still, you obviously you can have a high, financial upside if the talent you know becomes one of the best in his uh, in his in his sport but then you also enable you know a human being yeah to do what they love um and kind of have the shot yeah to make something out of it um and that's i think you know i believe will be even more important than the financial returns you can make um out of that investment um but obviously you can also lose your money right um, basically, you know, if the talent doesn't make it to the top, if the talent decides to stop his career because, you know, he he didn't have the, the development as expected, etc. And that's part of part of basically, you know, of the mechanics. And um, and it, it's just for us, it's very important, obviously, that we inform everybody. So it's very transparent, basically, also what kind of risks um, you, you you're, you're getting into basically by participating and investing in an athlete. Yeah, I think it's important to always highlight that investing is a risk at times. But I think my opinion on investing is it's better to often take that risk in something you believe in and you truly feel that by you providing that investment, in theory, you are giving that player that extra bit of support. And if things go to plan, it may be able to help them get over the line in these extra tournaments because tennis is very much a mental game. There's a lot of players inside the top 100. There's not always that met much between all of them. They're quite similar. They can all play tennis. They can all hit the ball crazy miles an hour. Sometimes it's just them finite details, small little bits of support. And you never know by you uh, having that extra backing with that player and him getting the extra um, treatments or whatever, whatever he can gain from that. It may be just an, the differential really for him. Uh, but the question I have for you is a scenario I want to put forward. So say if I was to invest in Dominic team and I bought a silver token in sort of March time. So the middle of uh, not the middle of the year, a few months into the year, how does it work with the payout if it's not for the full season? So would it be just his prize earnings from the date of me purchasing the token up until the end, what the December, how does it work with that? Yeah, so it always depends basically if the payout payout has been already you know paid out or not. Um, okay. So and that's that that's an information basically you will see when you purchase the token. You will be able to see is there any associated price money, and if yes, which hasn't been paid out yet, and if yes, how much it is, and that will kind of define obviously the price you are willing to to pay, but also the price. You know the one the person who has who is holding the the, the token is is willing to to sell it for. So okay. basically, that's something you will see if it has been already paid out um, by by basically the original holder. Um, then basically, you should just earn any everything basically with what comes next, right? And then yeah. yeah, and you will you will always have you always have some time to claim it, so you don't have to claim it immediately. Um, so you will get notified basically when there is a payout event possible. Um, and then you can basically request a payout and, and get it paid out. Or you can also just leave it on the token and, and, and kind of, you know, just request it later. 
So is this correct in what I'm saying? It's a bit like the stock market in terms of if you are purchasing a company in terms of the stock market and they're performing well, you'll pay a higher price for that individual share. So just like the token, if Dominic Teams, he's already just won the Australian Open, he's flying, you're going to pay a little bit more for that token. 100%, 100%, yeah, because yeah. it's 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 demand and supply and um, demand is driven by obviously the expectations, yeah, and on the only difference I believe to to stock market for most of the people listening to this podcast is that they are more excited about tennis than they are, you know, reading into these like uh, company reports like um, uh, every every other year. So um, I think it's it's totally right. So you have you know you own actually a share of, of of basically that asset in terms of the price money that player is is earning and then. And it's paid out as, as a kind of maybe kind of a dividend, maybe comparable to, to the stock market um, every every quarter for professional athletes. And then depending on the performance of the player in certain tournaments, you know, how, pe how many people believing in him or maybe you see a risk. Yeah, maybe he doesn't perform as expected anymore. You want to get out of it and invest the money into somebody else. Uh, there's always the price is always fluctuating. So Uh, you you can also see opportunities, find opportunities on the platform, and also kind of prove yourself compared to maybe to your friends, like who is the best, you know, uh, tennis scout or, or tennis investor. Yeah, I'm. Well, I think it's uh, really interesting as well because when you have obviously with stock markets and stuff like that, you you're investing in a company, but they don't have additional perks. So even if it would they were to be losing, let's say. You you say that these players you get extra perks for investing in that player. What are those extra perks that you get for investing in a player? Yeah, so that's that's very like super very exciting, right? So it depends always on the player, obviously. Like, you know, what do, does the player want to basically include in, in in these different types of tiers? But it um, I can already say like for for Dominic, like I think the most like the coolest perk I've seen. Is that for a few uh, people basically, um, uh, you can actually record one of your uh, favorite stro strokes, like tennis strokes, yeah, uh, or maybe, maybe the tennis stroke which needs you know the most help, and then you you can record it and you can basically then upload it, and then Domi, Dominic team will have a look, so he will actually review it, um, he will analyze it, and then he will send you a video message, yeah, basically, um, and then telling you basically his three recommendations but he would improve uh, uh basically uh, on your on your stroke so you will actually get a digital coaching so to say yeah from the former us open uh, grand slam champion and i think this is this is super exciting and the other the other perks i mean after dominic obviously there will be the next the next athlete which we haven't announced yet uh, but also very very cool person in the top 50 And there will be also even more, even like uh, you know more very cool cool perks and and that's very exciting and that's something on top of basically you know the financial utility which is something you know you you couldn't basically get uh, on 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 other um, uh, ways or channels or investments. I think you've already solved Ben completely. He's got a wonderful <laughs> one-handed backhand, and I tell I you didn't... what, I would love to see Dominic <laughs> Team reacting to Ben's one-handed backhand down the line. I mean, that's make good content. <laughs> you post it on the channel and watch him completely tear it apart, and be hitting it into the net, or it probably goes in the road. I think half of the time. Uh, yeah, it's more like can't wait to see it. And <laughs> the pressure is on. It really is. No, no, I think that's really exciting, though. That was just the one thing I think that differentiates it from uh, a normal stocks and shares type investment is you still get stuff for your money as well. Yeah. So even if you think you're losing money and your player's not playing well, you still have an interactive relationship with that player, which I think is important. And that's a big selling point because ultimately the people watching this now are tennis fans and everybody who's a tennis fan would love to get an interaction with Dominic team or whoever else, Nick Kyrgios or someone crazy like that. Imagine that, like that yeah. would be, that would make someone's day if they're having a look at their tennis strokes or having some sort of interaction with them. So yeah, for me, that's massive selling point. Yeah. And what are the long-term goals for Fantium in terms of how many players are you looking to get on the roster? Yeah. So, so basically, we we, I mean, we just launched now our our beta version of the platform. Uh, we we call it, 
Um, and um, basically for the better version, like we are still very like selective and kind of curating the athletes both professionally on the professional level, but also on the on the talent level, basically joining the, the, the platform and, you know, uh, kind of using the platform to, you know, make um, future income or future prize money shares available. Um, so that's still something, you know, ongoing for the next, let's say, six months, yeah, until maybe mid or end of end of next year. So very selective, um, but obviously a lot more players, um, um, especially young young talents, yeah, who um, you know desperately need yeah money and kind of kind of to to continue. So that's what we focus on beginning of next year. Um, long term, we believe we want to also open the platform to to any player, right? So that okay. even for like let's say if you are um, in the in the uh, you know top hundred or top hundred fifty between top 100, top 150, yeah, everybody can use it. And then it really doesn't matter, basically, you know, what uh, what's the amount of price money um, you want to wanna make available. So the platform should be open then to 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 every kind of athlete, yeah, in a certain spot uh, like tennis. So that really um, we have also, yeah, a very large amount of basically players available to, to invest in. And then each player can decide, you know, what, they want to kind of uh, include uh, in the in the um, in the different shares how much price money they want to give up, but also what kind of fan perks uh, they want to make available. Um, so that's the goal now for for tennis to kind of finish the the, the beta, focusing now in the uh, January onwards on the on the talent part, and then really begin until basically then end of end of next year, then more and more opening uh, the platform to to more players. Yeah, on Game to Love, we have a lot of members and some of our loyal supporters who love the women's tour and the WTA. And they'll be kicking me to ask you, is there any players you've been speaking to on the WTA tour who are interested in maybe joining Fantium? Anything you can give us? Anything you can reveal? Yes, 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 100%. So we have, we're speaking to a lot of um, active um, players on the, on the WTA tour. Um, so we have now, I mean, what I can say now for the, for the first play, it's Dominic team for the um, second one, it will be also an ATP player. And so the next professional player we will actually onboard on the platform. Yeah. We will be, um, a, a WTA player. We haven't signed anybody, but we are in touch with, with many professional players, but also basically young, um, athletes. Um, and we really, really want to make sure that we also have a kind of a 50, 50, split between male and female players um i mean starting now with, with male players but this is something very important uh, for us um also as a team um and um yeah that's something we where we have to catch up then uh, beginning beginning of the year the terms are completely the same right so there's obviously there's no difference uh, if you are a female player or male player both can you know use the platform on the same terms and um so we are yeah really looking forward then hopefully uh, to have the next um, female player then on the platform soon. That's really exciting. I was going to say, if you're going to keep on adding people in, maybe even JG will be able to enter a few ITFs and get a bit of a uh, fancy support from uh, the GTL community. No one will. Have, no one has any hope in me. It's fine. I think I'm a lost call. I left it too late. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you have to make sure that he doesn't have then, you know, enough time anymore for, for doing the podcast. So maybe, it's it. way. maybe we have to block him. <laughs> right. I think I think we've gone through pretty much all of the questions we've had, but there is one question that's relating to NFTs, which I feel like I need to ask. And that is why did you feel that NFTs are the best way to do this rather than say a traditional system of royalties? Yeah, because I think it's a great question and I, I get to ask that question a lot. Um, and my answer is always because I think it's not a standard and classical uh, investment. You know, it's an emotional investment. So you're not only investing into, you know, the, the prize money. Um, you get these fan perks, but you also get this connection uh, to that player. So that's number one. So basically, it's more like a digital asset, which you own uh, outside, basically beyond the the financial utility, the, the entitled shares in, in the earnings, etc. So that's the first reason. And the second thing is that you can you, do, you can do amazing things with NFTs later down the road, right? So you can actually, you know, by holding these NFTs and owning these NFTs, you will participate basically in the community. Yeah, you get later, you will get to vote which player should be funded next. If there are certain, like many different players available, you have token gated access to to certain you know channels yeah with the player you are invested in you can 
to speak and connect with everybody else who is invested in believing in that player. And then down the road, once also the, the market has, you know, developed, um, you can also use the NFT in the real world, right? So already in the, in the crypto world, you see basically amazing use cases where you can use NFTs as a kind of an entry ticket, for example, for, for a concert or for an event. Um, and that's something we can also then enforce basically in the tennis world, right? We could maybe start with like community events where only you get to basically participate when you have um, one of the NFTs um, bought or holding, you're holding one of the NFTs on the platform. But maybe even down the road, you can actually, maybe you have ticket access to tennis tournaments. You know, you have maybe free access when the tennis player is playing a specific tournament. And that's part of basically the, the deals we're going to make then with the, the tournament owner. So that's something like we are looking forward to, to, to have on the platform down the road. And that's only something basically possible using NFT technology and blockchain technology. And that's um, and then obviously that all the other reasons you know that it's it's uh, you can you can easily buy and sell it um, through different kind of marketplaces you you actually own it right so nobody can take it away etc cetera, etc cetera. so um, there are a lot of lot of benefits um, and, um, and and we are excited to to build also now Phantom like a, a platform and a project yeah which kind of uses actually this uh, you know blockchain technology beyond the profile pictures yeah or you know, maybe uh, some some animals, yeah. Um, um, even though I believe like every kind of community and every kind of project has um, also a reason, yeah, and uh, has utility. And, and in other cases, it might be the community, which is more important. In other cases, it might be the art, which is displayed on the on the NFT. Um, but for us, basically, it's it's a combination of the technology, but also then the the real world um, utility you can apply in in the real world by basically maybe accessing uh, tennis uh, tennis tournaments at one point. Yeah. Jonathan, it's been an absolute pleasure. I've really enjoyed listening to you. I can see that you've got a lot of uh, love and motivation behind this whole idea. It's a brilliant idea. Uh, I wish I'd have thought of it myself, if I'm being honest. <laughs> um, but yeah, I wish you the best of success. And of course, if anyone is listening and they are interested in Fantium, we will provide all of the links and all of the information in our description. So please check that out. Um, they're going to be launching and we've got an exclusive on the podcast in the next few days, probably when this comes out. So yeah, go check it out. It seems great. There's so much information on the website. If anything wasn't clear, which we spoke about, feel free to drop a message to me and Ben on the Discord or on, on our email as well. And we're happy to answer any questions we can. If not, we will be directing it straight to you, Jonathan. Um, but yeah, Ben, anything you want to say? Uh, you've enlightened me, Jonathan. Now to the world of NFTs. I'm excited. I want to get some some shares or some tokens in Dominic team or whoever is next coming out. I'll be, I'm even thinking already of some players. I'm hoping you're going to be getting involved with new up and coming ones because they're, that's where I think you make your money uh, on this uh, Fantium. But you do have a Discord as well. I'm already a member of the Discord. So make sure you go and join Fantium's Discord as well. And yeah, other than that, uh, you are the well, you are the future now of tennis. It seems you're combining like the two things together. Exciting. Yeah, th thanks. It was um, a real pleasure to to speak to you, and um, yeah, thanks for for having me. And um, I really enjoyed it, and um, looking forward to seeing you on the platform then then very soon. Amazing. Thank you so much for your time, Jonathan. Uh, and we'll see you very soon, I'm sure.